So I finished my first book. Five stars. Amazing. Cried. And I'm still not sure what I think. Absolute perfection. Beautiful. So invested in every single moment. I'm so glad I finally picked it up. I'm on my lunch break from work. My office is a mess. I'm reading a book that is not at all useful for this readathon. Sounds like it's time for a vlog. Hey folks, it's Abby and this is my vlog for the Middle Earthathon. Hosted by Lizzie from Lizzie's Elf. It started today, which is Friday the 26th of August, and I am going to be trying to read a lot of books. If you want to check out my August TBR, I clearly need more sleep. If you want to check out my Middle Earthathon TBR, it will be linked up here. This is not on it. This is Timefulness by Marcia Bjornrud. However, I am like 10 and a bit, because it's an appendices, pages from the end. Look, I just want to get it done, alright? And then I can actually read. Let's get this finished. It's done. This was very interesting. I liked that it highlighted some lesser known scientists who gave original discussions. I did not like we have an autistic view and that fell off. I have now finished the only leftover book that I had. So now I can get on to perhaps Sherlock Holmes, maybe? I'm thinking of starting with the casebook of Sherlock Holmes, which is right at the back, because that way then I'll have read the entire casebook, which is technically a book on its own. So even if I don't manage to finish the whole thing, then I'll have finished a selection of short stories. But first, I have a drag lesson. my first book, which was Demon Road by Derek Landy, the same author who did the School of Grief Pleasant books, and I'm still not sure what I think fully about this one yet. I finished it a day or two ago now, and it's very clear that the main character, he's trying to write a character like Valkyrie from the School of Grief Pleasant series, but he doesn't quite manage it. There's just something there, and whilst the events are all really interesting, it just didn't flow as well as School of Grief did. The banter between the different groups didn't quite work properly, but then I can see how it's set up for the second book, and I am still interested enough. I'm really unsure, it's like, it's both pretty interesting, I read through this really quickly, but then also compared to what he's written that I love, it's not as good. It's an interesting one. That is one book down that came in at 508 pages, so that's not too bad. And then I have actually read one of these short stories inside of here, I read The Casebook of Sherlock Holmes, these were a lot more predictable than a lot of the other Sherlock Holmes mysteries. It's the very last ones that Conan Doyle wrote, so I assume that is why. Uh, so they weren't the best, but I'm glad I've read them. It counts as like my short story, and I'm going to try and read other short stories within this um, and just see if I can get through it as much as I can. At the minute, I'm part of the way through the collection of Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And then lastly, all the light we cannot see, I am 275 pages into it. Today is Tuesday, and I haven't read any of it yet today because... I'm taking a little break from work at the moment. I'll read that later tonight and we'll see how it goes. But I am enjoying it so far. Enjoying is the wrong world. It's a World War II historical fiction. It is interesting and grasping my interest so far. So looking forward to finishing this one as well.
how did everyone do? I got 20 pages too. I read 36 pages of all the letters that I see. Waypoint Books parcel has arrived. I have covered my address with what I think is the most perfect fake address on the planet. I thought I would do a little unboxing of this. One of these is, there's three books in here. One is a book that I have ordered and the other two are ones that have come from Hannah's book selection service. So I'm gonna go with the one that I've ordered first. So Hannah's books always come wrapped in gorgeous tissue paper with a little Waypoint Books sticker. And I, I love that it's tissue paper because then you can kind of see the book before you open it. I just filmed myself unwrapping and talking about all the books and talking about how my reading's going so far and um, my camera failed to pick up any of that so that's wonderful. Let's just zip through these again for me. Armageddon out of here is the re-release of the collection of short stories. I've got the original one as well, but this has got seven new stories and matches the grimoire. So I'm very excited to have that one. Then Hannah in the emails recommends you three books and you pick whichever one out of those that sounds the most interesting to you. I picked Bluebird, which is about a character is here to be gay, do crime, and hopefully not die in the process. And it's a sci-fi story, so. Uh, sounds utterly fantastic. Hannah's read the first 30 pages and finds it fast-paced, so I'm looking forward to that. And then she also gives you a book that she thinks that gives you, sends you a book that she thinks that you will enjoy. And for me that is Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows by Balika Jaswal. I don't read a lot of contemporary, but when I do I like it to be diverse. I don't tend to pick up non-diverse contemporary at all anymore. Um, and as far as I know this is about a woman who is teaching Punjabi widows. I can't remember if it's to read English or to write, but either way it ends up with erotic stories. I'm sorry that this is slightly more rushed than I had intended it to be. My camera decided to be evil, <laughs> but I'm very very happy that I have these. Then I can't remember if I've updated you or not on All the Light We Cannot See, but I finished it. Five stars, amazing. Pride, beautifully written, wonderful kind of discussions on the topic of war and of good and bad and all of that. Literally the only complaint I have about this book is that one of the points of view is from a German boy, he ends up fighting in the German army and at one point he is travelling from Russia to northwest France and the author makes it seem as though travelling that distance was fine. The author is American and they are more likely to travel that distance. That is not something that Europeans would be doing, especially not in this time. The 1940s, during World War II, going through war zones, it would have been a bigger deal to be travelling that far and in that much danger. So that was the only issue that I had with this. Other than that, amazing. So it's still getting five stars. I'm not deducting any stars because of that, because the rest of it was just absolutely beautiful. And then for Sherlock Holmes, so out of everything that's in here, I've read A Study in Scarlet, The Sign of Four, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, The Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes, and The Casebook of Sherlock Holmes. I just have The Return of Sherlock Holmes um, of the short story collections left to read, which I've tabbed up here, and then The Hound of the Baskervilles, The Valley of Fear, and His Last Bow. I have to finish these by the end of Friday. It is Thursday afternoon. It's gonna be a push, but I'm gonna try. And then I had wanted to try and also read the kind of backup books that I set myself, so The Witchfinder Sister and The Cat Who Saved Books, but I, I am not going to have time to do that and to finish the Sherlock book, so I'm just going to accept my loss <laughs> and just try and finish Sherlock. <laughs> time to get some work done and then I can read this evening. All right, it's the end of the week. It's a few days past the end of the week. I need a rest. Let's go through what I read and what I thought about it. 
First up, Demon Road by Derek Landy, the author who does the Skullduggery Pleasant series. This is the first one in this new series, and I thought it was appropriate because, I mean, it's shiny, so it works for the, the shiny prompt, but also because I stole this from Lizzie. Uh, so I thought it was worth reading, but it was also over 500 pages. This was the first one I finished. I absolutely zipped through this. It's an incredibly quick read. I was hoping that would be the case, because I find that with a lot of Landy's writing anyway. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite live up to the amazingness of the Skullduggery Pleasant series. This is another urban fantasy. We follow a 16-year-old girl who finds out that her parents are demons, and they actually procreate, have a child, and then grow it up to 16 years old to then eat it to gain its power and remain powerful themselves, and in the group they pass this role round. So her parents want to eat her. Trigger warnings are in the description. And so she goes on the run um, and is helped out by some other demonous and supernatural folks um, on the road. Derek Landy is an Irish author. There is one Irish character in this who's supposed to be the comic relief, but this is actually based in the US. The comic relief is not the best done. I uh, didn't really care for the lad. Wasn't really here for him. This wasn't as good as the Scott Duggery series for me, unfortunately. I just found Amber to be a knockoff Valkyrie which is never great. Um, I did still enjoy it. I'm giving it either three or three and a half stars. It is still fun, the concept is still really interesting, and I do want to carry on with the series, but I think the only reason I'm carrying on is because I already like Derek Landy. I don't know if I would carry on without that motivation, so not the most helpful review, but yeah. <laughs> Something that was amazing, however, and it's five stars and everyone should pick this up, is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dewey. This is a historical fiction set during World War II. There are two primary points of view. One is a young Parisian girl who went blind at the age of six, and the other is a young German boy who lives in a rural coal town, and he ends up being recruited to Hitler's youth and then serving in the German army. This is beautiful. This is so beautiful. I put this off for ages and ages thinking that it would be too much to get through. It's another big book, this one is about 530 pages, but the chapters are broken up into teeny tiny little sections, which makes it super easy to get through. It's beautifully written, it's so emotive, I had one issue with the entirety of this book. That one issue is that this is written by an American author, and at one point the German boy who we follow travels from Russia to the northwest of France. Now, as any European knows, that is a journey. Now I know, in the US, they're all like, eh, it's fine, you can drive X number of hours and it's no big deal. Sure, but it would be for a European now, in 2022. Let alone in the 1940s, during World War II. <laughs> so the fact that the travel was really glossed over pulled me out of the story a little, just because there is no way that they would not be fatigued from the travel, from travelling through an active war zone, through all of these different places, from being unwelcomed in all of these environments, not to mention the fact that everyone in these places that they're going to is going to be speaking a different language, and so they have to try and communicate with what little knowledge they have of the few, no the few languages that they know between them. That was my only issue with the book. That was it. That was the only thing. Other than that, absolute perfection, beautiful, so invested in every single moment. I'm so glad I finally picked it up, and I wouldn't have done without this readathon. I'm so, so glad. And then my final read makes these two look small, and that is The Penguin Complete, Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, coming in at 1,122 pages, yes I remember it. This includes A Study in Scarlet, The Signs of Fall, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, The Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes, The Return of Sherlock Holmes, The Hound of the Baskervilles, The Valley of Fear, His Last Bow, and The Casebook of Sherlock Holmes. And I read them all, which I was not expecting to do. <laughs> I was fully expecting to completely fail and so started off with the casebook of Sherlock Holmes just so that I could finish a set of short stories, which is what this prompt was for. Instead, I actually managed it. I am giving this, I think, four stars, I think. Um, I do really love reading Sherlock books. I'm a little bit tapped out on them for now, <laughs> but I do really love the Sherlock books and it was fun to actually confirm that I had read them all. That was the intent of owning the full edition, is because I was never sure if I'd read all the stories or not. I hadn't, there were some I had not read, so I'm really glad that I was able to actually complete all of the Sherlock books. Some of them weren't as good as the others. I wasn't keen on The Valley of Fear. It's split into two sections. One is set in the UK, one is set in the US. was not keen on the US section at all. 
was not vibing with that and then some of the ones in the very last selection of stories so the casebook of Sherlock Holmes were very easy to solve I don't know if that's because I'm coming at it with a modern mindset where we've obviously seen a lot of these done before or if it is because it's the last ones he ever wrote for Sherlock and he was trying to wrap up the series Conan Doyle was fed up of writing Sherlock by this point so that may have played a role in it however it is a classic for a reason the stories are fantastic, even rereading the stories that I'd read before was really enjoyable, I'd read quite a lot of these already. I had a great time with that, even though it was a little stressful trying to finish it all. <laughs> it was like to the wire. It was in the very last reading sprint, just before midnight, that I managed to finish it. So that, that was a lot. But yes, I managed to, within this readathon, read over 2,000 pages just in one week. What the hell? I need a rest. I need a nap. Oh dear god, I need oh so much. But yes, please let me know in the comments down below. Did you take part in Middle Earth Athon? If you did, did you manage to read any books? Even just one page of any book, even if it's not even vaguely related to Tolkien, is a fantastic result. So please let me know what you managed down below. Thank you for watching this vlog. I did not film as much as I wanted to because I just needed to get the reading in. Next time I'm going to pick much shorter books. <laughs> Yes, this is again happening next year, so keep an eye out on the Middle Earth on Twitter, the Instagram, and obviously on Liz Lizzie's channel herself. I will link all of the wonderful human beings from the Middle Earth Athon down below in the description, so please do go and check them all out. Obviously, we have our primary host, Lizzie, then we have Hannah O'Donnell, we have another wonderful Hannah who primarily does blogs, so I will also link her blog down below, but she has created a YouTube channel because Lizzie and Hannah O'Donnell bullied her. Uh, then we've got Celine and we've got Yemena. Please, please. Go follow them all. They're all wonderful human beings. If you'd like to see some more from me, obviously that little red button is down there and you can click like on the video if you enjoyed it because it promotes it to more people. And I will see you in the next video, which hopefully I will not be reading. It's about 2,200 pages in a week. I will not be reading that much in September. I'm telling you right now. Thanks for watching folks and I will see you in the next one. Bye!